When we looked at projectile motion in episodes 11 and 16, we thought about the downward force of gravity changing the velocity of the projectile. Because gravity points downward, only the vertical component of the projectile's velocity changes, unless we add in air resistance, which always works to slow down the particle. In addition to forces, we can think of a projectile's trajectory in terms of the types of energy present in the system. The first kind of energy we need to think about is called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is manifested in an object moving. The higher the speed or the greater the mass, the more kinetic energy is present. We can calculate the kinetic energy of our projectile as one half times the mass of the projectile times the square of the projectile's velocity. Since velocity is a vector, this square is calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. The projectile has more kinetic energy at the beginning of the trajectory and less at the top since the projectile loses its vertical velocity between the two points. And if we include air resistance, the projectile continuously loses kinetic energy from this resistive force. The second kind of energy we need to think about is called potential energy. Potential energy is manifested as two objects interacting through a force. In this case, we're interested in the gravitational potential energy between the projectile and the Earth. Near the surface of the Earth, we can calculate this potential energy with a simple equation given by the projectile's mass times the strength of the Earth's gravitational field times the projectile's height above the surface of the Earth. The last kind of energy we need to think about is called work. Work is manifested as one object losing kinetic energy due to a resistive force. When our projectile encounters air resistance, it loses kinetic energy to the air molecules that cause the air resistance. We can calculate work as the product of the force of air resistance with the distance that the projectile travels in each frame of the animation. We just match the x component of the force with the x component of the distance and match the y component of the force with the y component of the distance. The reason we're interested in energy is because the total energy in the universe must remain constant. We call this the law of conservation of energy. For our projectile, this universal rule means two things. First, if we have no air resistance, then the total of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy must remain constant. Second, if we include air resistance, then the total of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy will decrease by the same amount as the work done by the force of air resistance. Now remember, our animation routine is based on forces. It doesn't know anything about energy, and there's no trick set up to guarantee that the rule of energy conservation will apply. So, we can use energy to test whether our code is working properly. Here, we set up four different graphing curves. One for the projectile's kinetic energy, one for the gravitational potential energy between the projectile and the Earth, one for the work done by the force of air resistance, and one for the total of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Here in the loop, we calculate the three types of energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and work. These calculations are set up exactly like the equations that we saw earlier. Lastly, we graph the current values of these three energies, plus the total of the kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's start out with zero drag coefficient to model a projectile with no air resistance. As the projectile launches higher, the potential energy increases. Because the projectile slows down as it rises, the kinetic energy decreases. But the kinetic energy and the potential energy always mirror each other so that the total energy is always the same value. They obey the same relationship when the projectile heads back down to the ground with the kinetic energy increasing and the potential energy decreasing. This graph shows us how the energy changes from one form to another but keeps the same total value. Now let's add in air resistance by giving the drag coefficient a small value. As expected, the total energy decreases since the projectile is losing kinetic energy to the air molecules that it runs into. And the work done by the force of air resistance also tracks downward, accounting for the loss of energy. The identical shape of these two graphs shows where our lost energy is going into the atmosphere. You have now learned how to study the various types of energy involved in projectile motion. Follow the link in the description below to complete a set of activities to help you learn more about energy.